We're now going to look at how we can classify forces as either conservative or non-conservative. But why would we want to do this? Well, we've said before that energy is always conserved within a closed system. The problem is that most of the problems that we're given don't actually involve a closed system. So for example, if we consider a person in a lift which is accelerating upwards, then that person in the lift itself isn't a closed system. If we wanted the closed system, we'd need to include the entire Earth as the Earth is creating the gravitational field through which the lift is moving and also the turning mechanism at the top of the lift which is pulling the lift upwards. And generally, there's a lot of things that we need to consider which are outside the scope of the question if we want to create a closed system. So we want to learn about conservative forces as there's a rule of conservation of mechanical energy which tells us that mechanical energy is conserved when non-conservative forces do no work. So there's a couple of new terms in this statement here. So first of all, mechanical energy. What is mechanical energy? Well, mechanical energy is just the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy. So we've learned about kinetic energy before. The translational kinetic energy of an object is given by a half mv squared. We've also looked at a few different types of potential energy. So we've seen that there's potential energy in the Earth's gravitational field close to the Earth, which is given by mgh. And we've also seen the potential energy which can be stored in a string when we stretch it, which is given by a half kx squared. So the next term in our statement that the mechanical energy is conserved when non-conservative forces do no work is, well, what is a non-conservative force? Well, a force is conservative if it does no work on a particle around any closed path. So a closed path is one where a particle starts and ends at the same position. So we saw with the Earth's gravitational field that if I threw a ball up and caught it at the same height, then as it went upwards, the gravitational force was pulling it downwards. So we had negative work done. And then as it goes back down, its displacement is down, the force is down. So we've got positive work. And we saw that these two works were equal and opposite. So if I threw a ball up and then it came back down to the same height, there is no work done along that closed path. So that's one example of a closed path because it's going from one point and then it's returning to the same point. Now let's imagine that I threw the ball up and then I moved it across, then I dropped it and then I moved it back across. So that's another example of a closed path. path. Well, how much work does the gravitational force do in that case? So we'll assume that we can just model gravity here as the potential energy due to gravity is mgh. So we're, we're not doing enormous distances here. So as it goes up, we've got that the work done is minus mgh. Then as it goes across, in this case, the height isn't changing. And so the gravitational force is acting down, the displacement is across, those are at right angles to each other, so the work done by the gravitational force as it moves across is zero, and then down we've got the positive work done, and then back across, and again, in this case the force is acting downwards, the gravitational force, because we're just considering the work done due to the gravitational force, and that's downwards, and the displacement is across, so again, at right angles, so there is zero work done. So around this closed path, if we consider the work done by gravity, once again, at zero. So the gravitational force is a conservative force, as around any closed path, the work done is zero. An example of a non-conservative force is friction. So for example, if I, um, pull a ball, slide something along a surface this way, as it slides, the frictional force is resisting its motion. So the frictional force is back in that direction, while the displacement is in this direction. So in that case, the work's done is negative. Now let's consider the ball going back 
in the other direction or whatever it is that we're sliding along. In this case, the frictional force opposes the motion once again. So in this case, the frictional force is in this direction and the displacement is in that direction. So once again, we've got negative work done as the displacement and the force are in opposite directions. So when we add together two negatives, we end up with a negative. We don't end up with zero. So the frictional force is an example of a non-conservative force, as we could think of an example where an object was undergo moving through a closed path and the work done was not zero. So another example of a non-conservative force is air resistance. So an equivalent way of saying that the work done around any closed path is zero is to say that, well, the work done is independent of the path taken. So to get up to here in the gravitational field, it doesn't matter if I go directly up or if I go across, up and across. The work done is the same in both cases as the work done while we go in the horizontal direction is zero. Whereas if you are moving an object across the surface and considering the work done by friction, it does depend upon the path. If we take a long route, then we're overcoming a lot more friction than if we take a direct route. Now, an example of a problem where we have both non-conservative and conservative forces is if we imagine having a block at rest on a table and if we shoot a bullet up at it so there's a small hole in the table for the bullet to come up we'll be looking at this example again when we consider collisions but in this case we can break this down into two sections as the bullet enters the block there are non-conservative forces doing work as there's a lot of friction there's sound generated and the bullet will crumple as it enters that block once the bullet is at rest within the block or it's passed straight through the block and continues on its path, we then have non-conservative forces acting as at that point, as the, as the block moves up, all that's acting on it is the gravitational force, which is a conservative force. So the important point here is that as the bullet enters the block, energy is not conserved. So the initial kinetic energy of the bullet, if it comes to rest in the block, isn't equal to the final kinetic energy of the block as energy has been lost as work overcoming friction and other things. So not lost from the Earth, it's still in the Earth system, but it's lost from that system that we're considering. Once the bullet has come to rest within the block. However, there's now non no non-conservative forces acting. So after that point, energy is conserved and our initial kinetic energy is converted into gravitational potential energy. And then when we have no more kinetic energy, the block is at rest and then it starts to fall back down. So the important thing to remember is that mechanical energy is conserved when non-conservative forces do no work.